Okay, I didn't want to talk about the uh, Magic the Gathering set, the Lord of the Rings set anymore, but I have to dive into it because there has been a revelation on the One Ring how it might be an illegal lottery. Well, let's start here. The One Ring bounty is up to $2 million. This is absolutely ridiculous. It includes a trip to Spain to try and, you know what, show off the ring. I don't know. We're going to throw it in the temple or the mountain of Mount Doom and just get rid of the damn thing. This is something that Wizards of the Coast should never have made. And when they did announce that the One Ring was going to be there, I did actually question if it was legal to do so. And my good friend at Rank and Runkle of the Bailey seems to have uh, discovered that there might be some legality issues with this ring. I am no lawyer. I am not anyone to take advice from. But if you happen to open this ring, don't just go running out the door with it, celebrating it. First, speak to a lawyer, because it seems that if this was opened in Canada, it may actually be deemed null and void, and you may have to may have this one ring confiscated by the police because it was illegally obtained in this fashion. Now, where do we go here? Now, a booster pack has 15 cards in it. I, I don't even know what it is in the collector's boosters. I think it's 12. Um, you get a booster pack. You open up cards. You get these cards. This has been going on for 30 years. Over 30 years, they've been making this game. And yes, they've made cards that are very valuable, dependent on the secondary market. But in this case, they've never made it where there is a single, I don't, just a one-off of a card you you know this is you walk down west Edmonton mall this is the biggest mall one of the biggest malls in the world now i don't think it is the biggest anymore but it's the biggest uh tourist attraction where i live here in Edmonton, alberta um you walk through this mall and they have a lamborghini in the middle of the mall that you can win uh you you enter your name in it you put your name in it and you win this lamborghini but there's a catch you can only you only get to have it for like one or two years it's a, it's a rental in that sense you don't actually get to keep the thing um, and there's the fine print. In this case, the one ring doesn't come with any of this fine print. It doesn't come with all these legalities. It doesn't come with all these rules. And this is something I have spoken out against with Wizards of the Coast, how they run their game, how things that they do are very anti-consumer and uh, things are very bad for the, the game in general. If you had followed me um, while I was playing Arena back before it went downhill, back, back when they made changes where you had to update your deck pretty much once a month, forcing you to spend money in the game as a free-to-play player, um, there were certain things where you can get cosmetics in the game. And the cosmetics would always be, they, they would always have a sale on these cosmetics. Well, some of them you could only obtain if it was during the sale period and they would say it would be on for 50 percent off well you can't obtain it otherwise you there was no possible way you could obtain these items these cosmetics outside of the sale so it wasn't really a sale you you can't say it's a sale it's actually illegal here in canada to offer a product that is no that is not at that, that it doesn't have a regular price where it's only ever at a sale price. Well, if you do that, it's actually illegal, right? It has to be offered at a regular price and then you can put it on sale like a week later, but you can't just introduce a product and say it's that. Well, this takes it to a new level with the one ring and the bounty for the one ring off being offered $2 million. Well, suddenly you have a brick of gold or a diamond in this case is where Rankle of the Bailey put it, where this diamond ring that you happen to get out of a Cracker Jack box, well, now it has so much value to it that you've got to ask yourself, is this a lottery? Is this legal? Is there things that have been off the rails on this situation because there was only one printing of it. When something is this rare, it's not easy to sit there and put out on the market. Literally in this case, it is the government printing money. Wizard of the Coast literally goes out there and prints a $100 bill 
and puts it into a uh, booster pack. That is illegal, right? It, it's, you know, I, I, we, I, I brought this up on the Magic Historians or Hatcher's stream last night. Um, and he, he, at first he was like, no, wait, 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 wait. The, this isn't, uh, this isn't anything. This is, they're making a card. No, this is actually legitimately something that needs to be paid attention to because if the governments do get involved in something like this, it's going to regulate the way Wizards of the Coast, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, any trading card game can do certain things like this. This has never been done before in this circumstance. There's different things when it comes to like trading cards and uh, hockey cards where they give you a f piece of a jersey in a card uh that you can open up in a booster pack but we're talking like a one inch square of a jersey that gets cut up into multiple versions of it yes they're kind of rare but there is many different versions of it and they don't sell for like $2 million. It's, oh, I got a piece of fabric. It's, it's, it's not really worth anything. It's kind of neat to have. Um, and it's uh, in this card. But when it comes to Magic the Gathering and the expenses of the cards, when you print something this valuable, literally you are printing money. And the governments take ire to that. And that is where this has become contention. And it's going to create a controversy in this case where you need to sit there and realize that if you open this, there is legal ramifications that you never signed on to. You never signed a contract with Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro to open something like this. And there's going to be a repercussion of it, and it's going to be a ripple effect down the line. Now, Rankle of the Bailey, or Runkle of the Bailey, in his Roll of Law video, uh, actually covered this and goes into Section 206 of the Criminal Code here in Canada, which I have up here, the same code. Now, this code... Uh, it, it, particularly uh, part 206, offense in relation to lotteries and games of chance. The example that Runkle or Ian uh, actually uses is you have hundreds of mystery boxes and in one of those boxes, you have a diamond ring. Is it legal to put that out there on the market? And in this case, it's a card that Wizards of the Coast has printed right? It, it, it's what is the difference of Wizards of the Coast printing a $2 million bill? Yes, there is the secondary market, but in the same analogy that, uh, that Ian makes here, where he says, I have a brick of gold. Yes, it's shiny, but it's what people are willing to pay for it. You cannot just sit there and print off money like this. And this is pushed it down to the limit where I can tell you governments are going to raise an eyebrow when they see the $2 million bounty on a card like this. And they're going to go, wait a second, you can't do this. And it, it's done. What's, what's going to be the repercussions of this? Is this something where Wizards of the Coast weighed and said, well, you know what? It, there's a risk, risk involved. There might be some fines involved in this. Let's do it anyway, because it's a PR stunt. It's going to be something down the line, and that PR stunt is going to pay off way more than these fines could ever do to us. Mm, I'm not quite sure. Magic the Gathering only just reached a billion dollars in the last year, where like companies like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, they've been up in the billions for years. So they've never had to resort to this level of um, consumerism where it's anti-consumerism. They've never gone that route uh, where they're only printing a one of one of card. Um, it, it, there's so much hype around the Lord of the Rings set right now that the one ring in the bundle is going for like $60, increasing the price of the bundle drastically. This was something that I don't think that they... Uh, expected with it and this is goes to show you how little they are actually product testing their game anymore they they just put things on a card throw it out there and let the market and let let it go crazy and that's what's happened here with the bundles in that case anyway i'm going to suggest everyone go watch uh, the role of the law video here uh, is Hasbro committing a crime with the their one ring promotion because it is very informative. Uh, Ian is a lawyer in his everyday uh, uh, 
stuff and it is something that is worthwhile watching because I tell you, I, I, you know, I even made a comment on here talking about how Wizards of the Coast has been doing this consumerism, uh, anti-consumerism with uh, Arena for a long time where they put things on sale that you just can't buy normally. And there's there's a lot of things that Wizards of the Coast is doing that is just not consumer friendly. And loot boxes and things, this is going to catch the ire of a lot of people uh, when it comes down to the legality of where you can actually go with this one. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Go watch Roll of the Law's video on this. Uh, it will give you a hell of a lot more information than I can here, but I can give you my perspective as a avid Magic the Gathering player. I uh, have an avid... Uh, gamer uh this is not something that should have been ever made thanks for watching have yourselves a great day